Colossians chapter 3. You know, I just thank him for being here because every opportunity we get to walk through that door, we should be very thankful for it. Amen. Colossians chapter, we'll start at verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewing in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barabbin or Scythian, bound nor f- bond nor free, but Christ in all and, and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy, beloved, bowels of mercy. That one's a good one, ain't it? Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against you, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and abolishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father to Him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wife. Be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your master according to the flesh, not with eye service. As men pleasers, pleaser, but in singleness of heart, fearing God, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto man, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the word, reward of the inheritance for your service, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for wrong which he had done, and there is no respect of person. I am no better than no one else. The only thing that makes me different than those out in the world is I became alive. They are as dead men out there because didn't I just read that? In 10 it says we put in the new man. A new man, I had to die out. You had to die out at one point in time and to put on the new man. Now we died out. There was a bunch of stuff before that, but that was for the old man. I'm not preaching on no old man tonight. I'm preaching on what's supposed to be the new man. We as Christians, the old shouldn't be, be in us at all. Amen? All this that I read should be what's in us. And I begin to think on that. Bowels of mercy. That's, that's pretty good, ain't it? Bowels of mercy. That, that's, that means you've got to have a lot of mercy. You've got to quit being so judgmental. Quit judging people for every little thing they do. As they was singing, um, all right, Lord, let's see. I went over in the first part of Colossians, I think it's chapter 2, I'm not sure. It says, handle not. Touch not and taste not, or something like that. There's things fixing to come your way, and you need not to be handling it. Let God take care of it. You do what you need to do, as as Steve said, do your part, but don't handle with it. Do what God tells you to do, and then let God take care of it. Amen? That's showing, we got to show the love, the kindness, and mercy, but... As a new creature that we are. As the, the moment we got up from the altar, we took on all this. 
just as Christ. That's what Christ done when Jesus walked. What did he show? He showed mercy. Even when they were mean to him. Even on the cross, he still had mercy for them. Now you, you think about it. We have none in this building ever been put to a test such as that. That we've had to show mercy to someone that has literally beat us half to death. Amen. I have not been put to that test. That somebody's had to beat me and then I had to get up and hug their neck and say, I still love you. I have not been put to that. You have not been put to that. But we've got to get to where if we're put to that, that we can do as Jesus and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Amen. That's, that's merciful. Amen. That's pretty forgiving. That's having the bowels of compassion, having a compassion. Amen. That's showing love when you really don't want to love. Amen. To me, that would be, I don't know about anyone else, but that would be a, a hard task. It'd be a hard task for someone to walk up and spit in your face. And you just wipe it away and, and hug them. I say, it's all right, I understand what you're packing that made you do that. No, we don't. First thing would happen is we'd want to go back to the old man. And we'd want to let that old man rare up. We'd want to let that anger rare up. Instead of the forgiveness and the kindness, we'd want to rare up, get mad, spit back, throw a punch, whatever you do. That's what we would want to do as the old person. But as the new, we have got to do as Jesus. He couldn't, even, he couldn't even teach in his own hometown because of unbelief on him. So he had to go out. Amen. In his own hometown where, where you think you should have it, Amen. have safety, have someone, you know, like here. When I preach, I, I mean, I clearly hear Jennifer behind me. Amen. But that, that's what I'm saying. I've, you know, I know she's got my back. Jesus couldn't even go into his hometown. Nobody had his back. Amen. Amen. Well, Lord, we're going to have to find, hold on a minute. I've got to find my, I've got to find my Bible up. Well, I'm going to find my Bible. It gets pretty hot up here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's time that we show Amen. Christ to this dying world. And not only that, we got young ones in here. Amen. We got to teach them Christ. Amen. Amen. I know that I'm a Sunday school teacher and Nikki and Teresa, and we try our best, but it's the others too because they see what you're doing. Amen. And it's pretty bad when they see what an adult's doing and they're like, well, they do it, why can't I? I'm like, oh Lord. Amen. Amen. But we got young ones in here that we got to, that we got to show to, amen. And if you ever hear the old saying is, um, "There ain't nothing secret at home when the kids is around." Hey, that's the truth. They tell everything they know, even when you you tell them, "Don't say nothing about this now," and they're like, "Okay." Next thing you know, it's done been broadcasted. Amen. Amen. But see, we got to teach our kids, zip it. If they see us with our lips zipped, then that's going to teach them to zip theirs too. If we go off and give opinions when we don't need to be giving opinions about someone, what's that cause? It causes our children to give opinions when they don't need to give opinions. When we should say, well, God, you understand. And I know and you know what's causing this person to do that. So help me, God, to love them. Amen. To love them no matter what they're doing, no matter what they've said about me, help me to love them. Amen. Because it's not them. We've got to teach our kids that. The kids that bullies them, it's not them. Pray for these kids that do do that, but teach them who it is doing that. Teach them how to react and not fight back. Physically, but fight back on their knees Amen. with the only true Father that can help them. And who are we to fight back? 
I ain't to go fight with Teresa if she gives me a mean look. I ain't to walk over and just smack her and think it's going to be okay. I'm to pray and say, God, what's wrong with her? Help me to see what's wrong with her that I can might help her. Amen. Not to go over and, and start something. Amen. Maybe she's having a bad day. We got to learn to love through love people through their bad days. Amen. No matter what's going on, we've got to learn to love them, not judge them, not put them down, because that's the old man. That's what the old man would do. Amen. The old man would sit and say, "Well, they got themselves in it. Let them get it out." <laughs> Amen. They made they that mud bed. hole. Let them waller in it. That's the old man. But the new man says, God, please help them some way to get out of that mud hole. God, I understand that they've done this to themselves, but you're a God of gods and can help them out of whatever they've got themselves into, whatever drug addiction, whatever, whatever's going on in their life. He is truly the only one that can help them. Amen. And what are we to do? Amen. We're to help them down on our knees. Amen. Not out dragging them through the mud. Amen. Amen. We've got to get like Jesus Amen. and just love them to pieces. Amen. Love them. Just, that's, why he, that's what he taught Stephen. Amen. Stephen learned from him that when they were, th they, when they were stoning and throwing rocks at him, and they, what did he say? Almost the same thing as Jesus. But he said, forgive them. Lay not this sin to their charge. So you tell me he wasn't listening? That he wasn't? And people say, well, only Christ can be, be like that. Stephen wasn't Christ and he was like that. Why? Because he got a hold of something, just like Amy was talking about. <clears throat> when you truly get a hold of it, you can't help but want to change. You can't help but feel inside something different. It's like, it's hard to explain. It is so hard to explain. But once you get a hold of it, you're like, it's like boiling water on the, on the inside about all the time. But you don't know how to explain it. Amen. That's when you truly, but when I go over, trying to lean back to the old man, trying to judge people, then I'm no better. I'm not, I'm not like Stephen. When, I, when they start stoning me, I'm going to start stoning them back. Amen. They start rocking me. You know, you ever see that movie, Old Yeller? <laughs> Arliss rocks them to death. <laughs> Amen. That's what I do. I pick me up a rock and start rocking them back. <laughs> Amen. Now, think about it, would you? The old man would. If we're leaning to the old man, the old man will rock them back. But the new man will love them. The new man will say, Jesus said, they surely don't know. Or maybe we could say, Jesus, I was that way one time. Amen. And because you come my way, Amen. I'm not like that no more. And I know somehow, some way, you can touch them. Because I'm not for sure exactly who it's at. I'm not, I'm not a good person on remembering verses and, and books. But I know the Bible says if we stand in the gap, that we're to stand in the gap for them. Amen. Amen. And I believe this word with everything in me. And I believe if I'm standing in the gap, if I would take them on my heart and stand in the gap for them, things will move because it says it has to. There is no way that it can stay like that. Us Christians, we... I know there's a lot of things coming. A lot of things going on, but there's good coming. There's really good things coming. But it's going to take us Christians doing our part. It's going to take us Christians loving them like they've never known before. Showing them a love that they don't see in the world. Because you don't see that kind of love in the world. Well, they'll love you as long as you got something they want. But you let that run out and see how long they love you. When you got money, they'll love you. When you got booze, they'll love you. But when all that runs out, do they love you then? Amen. But 
But see, we Christians has got to love them when they ain't got no money, when they ain't got no booze, when they're all hateful, or whatever situation they're in. We got to show them that love. It should be in us. If we're saying that we got it right here, then it should be in us. That compassion toward others should be in us. We should not be so quick to point fingers and say, this one done it. That one done it. You know, I love what Teresa said that time when she was talking about how God is the judge, Jesus is my lawyer, and the devil is the, the prosecuting attorney. Think about it. The devil is always trying to get you to point fingers and blame everything else on someone else. Amen. To keep you over onto that side. Jesus knows once you get over here and you get all this inside of you and you begin to let it work. And if it's in you, it's going to come out. If it is in you, it will come out. Whatever's in there, if, if anger's in there, anger will come out. If joy's in there, joy will come out. If hatred's in there, hatred will come out. If love is in there, love will come out. So, so you've got to check your own self with God and find out truly what's inside. That you can be able to do the work that God has called you to do. Amen. See, we can't do a work if we've got the fruits of the bad spirit, the, the bad fruits in us. Amen. We cannot because they will come out on us. These good things that I just read to you and forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Forgiving's a hard thing, ain't it? We want to hold a grudge like no other. We want to remember something that happened 20 years ago. Let it go. Amen. It's done over with. 20 years is a long time. <laughs> 20, 20 years is a long time. It's time to let go. Do you want to let that 20-year-old grudge keep you from heaven? Because my father, Jesus, made me a promise that he's one day going to come back after me. And how can I expect him to come back after me if I'm not forgiven? Amen. And if any man have a quarrel against you, even as Christ forgave you, see, that's a, that's a doozy, ain't it? As Christ forgave you, you're to forgive them. How did Christ forgive you? Never, never to bring it up again. He casted it as far as the east is from the west. Right? Shouldn't we do the same thing? When I walk up and Teresa has done something bad to me, and I say, I forgive you. But five years down the line, I bring it back up to her. I didn't forgive her. Amen. If I want to continually to bring it back, I didn't forgive her. Amen. You can say you forgive her, and you can maybe believe it. But if you keep bringing it up, then you ain't forgivable. And you expect God to forgive you, didn't you? Amen. When I got down and I prayed, that's all I, th I know. I thought, well, God, you're going to forgive me. You know, you ever watch your brother Rotto? He come out of the water, he said, I'm forgiven. Even the Piggly Wiggly, I'm forgiven. Amen. You're forgiven. Why, do, why won't you forgive them? Why do you keep bringing them up? Why do you keep bringing what's in the past back up? The past is the past. We can do nothing about it. Amen. What mistakes I made yesterday, I made them. I can't go back yesterday and redo it. All I can do is pray today and say, God, help me to be more loving. God, help me to have more mercy. Help me to be more compassion. Amen. Help me to, to do Amen. all the good that you asked for me to do. Amen. I mean, I might have messed up yesterday, Amen. but today's a new day. Help me tomorrow to be better than what I was yesterday. Help me tomorrow to be better than what I was today. That's all we're to do is every day that we're alive, we're to be better than the day before. We're to strive to be better than the day before. Don't look at two years from now because a lot of things happen. 
Amen. A lot of things happen in one day. In one day, your world can be rocked all to pieces. Amen. We all know that all too well around here. So take it. As that old song is, old song is, one day at a time. Every day, strive to be better than what you was yesterday. Look at what you done yesterday or what your mess ups was yesterday and try to do better today. And then the next day, try to do better. Amen. See, that's, what, that's all Jesus wants Amen. us to see is trying. Amen. He wants to see us trying to get there. Amen. Not just sitting there like dying, you say and say, breath, come to me, I breathed you the last time. And you know it ain't going to come back to you, you're going to have to breathe it in. Amen. Amen. Even if you're on auction, he'll force it in. So we've got to put some work to it, and that's all he wants. He wants us to show him we're trying. You know, not just sit back and be one of these lazy children and say, oh, you know what old commercial, that little boy sits in his bedroom, calls his grandma on the phone, wanting a great pop. You know, sometimes I believe we're like that with the Lord. We just sit there and call him up, Lord, move on this. I ain't going to go there, but move on it. You know, and you know, we laugh at that commercial. And it is funny, and the poor old woman is barely moving. Barely can't get to the phone. But we do God the same way. We sit, and we call him up. The refrigerator's right next door. I wasn't even next door, the next bedroom. He was in his bedroom, so it had to be in the kitchen. We're within a couple arm distance. God, do this for me. Get up and go out and water your own flowers, and then they'll grow. Amen. If it's in a dry time, water your flowers and they'll grow. Go out and water and they'll grow. The seeds he's planted, we need to get out and water them. Amen. Amen. They ain't going to grow without water. And when he says go, and then you, you next turn around, oh Lord, please, please move on now. You're worse than the boy with the grape soda. He done told you to go. Amen. But it's not in you because it would come out. If you truly want to do it, you'll do what you truly want to do. Amen. If you truly 100% love Him with all your heart and you want to serve Him no matter what, you will. Because the Bible says that no one can pluck you out of His hand but yourself. So that goes to tell me if you get your mind set, get it in your mind and in your heart, that he, you can't live one day without Him. And I know the devil comes and he torments and he, he thumps and he knocks. But if you still keep pushing and you tell God you're going to serve him no matter what. That's what it's going to take. Because nobody can pluck you out of that hand. It's you're doing it. You're saying it's the devil. You're saying it's the devil that that's causing you to do things, but it's not. It's self. The Bible plainly says it. I'm the only one who can take myself out of his hand. People that backslide, holler, this one made me do it and that one made me do it. No. You did not have a mindset. Because if you do, there's been people, I can, you can look at Diane. Look what all she went through. But she had a mindset. Right? That she was going to make heaven her home. Once we get that mindset, and I know we go through things, I ain't saying we don't. We all have our own troubles. We all have our own trials. We all, we all have our own things that, that gets us. But if you get your mindset and say, I'm going to serve you, then you'll do it. Amen. Things will be hard, but you've got to remember how. When you was in the world, who did you have to turn to? Nothing. The devil that caused you more torment. Right? Now I can turn to the Father and I can find my peace, my joy, even through all things that goes on in your life. Through all, the, all of it. But one day at a time is what it's going to take. To make heaven our home. Every day, get your mind to say, this day, 
I'm not giving up. This day is going to be the day that maybe Jesus comes after me. Because you don't know. I don't know when my day is and you don't know when yours is. But I want to live every day as if it, it could be the day that Jesus comes back Amen. after me. Amen. And I want to ask you a question. If today was your day, say you give up today, and tomorrow was your day that Jesus come back. If that's how it is. Make your mind up who you really want. And when you truly, 100%, get a mind made up to serve Him, these things that I read you will come easy. You'll find it easy to love people. You'll find it easy to have compassion. You'll find it easy to have mercy. You'll even find it easy to forgive them 20-year-old things that happened 20 years ago. But the only reason you can't is because you won't fully, we're going back, surrender. You won't let Him come in and take out all the things that needs to be taken. And until you do, your mind is always in a battle. God, I don't think I can do this. Lord, I can't serve you. I don't think I can do it. Get it in your heart that today might be your last day. And if you give up today, what if you, what if you pass in your sleep? Is it worth it? Is it worth serving the Lord for 40 years to give up now? It ain't worth it if you've only been in it a week. If you've only been in it one day, it's not worth giving up over. Amen? Not now. We, everyone in this building, in the last year, or a little over here, knows how quick death comes. Right? Every one of us, unexpected or expected. Amen. Amen. We know how quickly it comes. So think tonight, in your own, own mind and heart, who do you truly want? What do you truly want inside of you? Do you want anger, bitterness, envy, strife, jealousy? Do you want all that working inside of you? I don't. That's what I got rid of the old man for. That's why I wanted to die out to that old man. I didn't want it no more. Amen. It was an ever most miserable life. Amen. 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 And yes, we have trials and tribulations. He has no respect of person. We Christians go through things just the same as us sinners. We all go through things. But see, there's one difference between it. They have no help. But we do. So why do you want to let go of that one true help? The only one that can truly give you a peace of mind. Amen. The only one that can give you a promise that He's going to come and take you to a land that your eyes has never seen before. Amen. That's the one true promise I hold to. I, I mean, I know there's great and mighty promises in here all through the Word. But that one, that one does it all. I was sitting on my porch today thinking that one great promise. And God, we don't know when that promise is coming. We don't know when our promise is. Amen. But I want to hold tighter to Him today than I held on to Him yesterday. And if I wake up tomorrow, I want to squeeze it. I want to hold His hands so tight that the blood don't flow no more. Because I don't want to let Him go. Amen. Because there's nothing that I've went through out there I could I face it without Him. Amen. In 29 years, I can see every day I can't make it without Him. I can't make it without Him. I don't want to. I want, I want Him in my life stronger today than it was yesterday. Every day I want to grow so close to Him that He says, all right, I'm, you're just so close, I'm going to have to come get you. Amen. I want to get there, which I don't really think you can never get that close, but I want to work on it. Every day that I'm on this earth, I don't want to spend my time fiddling it away. 
but I want to try to get closer to him of whatever it is that he wants me to do. Amen. I want all of his works to flow through me. And no, I'm not some special person that I'm going to go out there and, and do something spectacular. But whatever he wants me to do, if it's just to walk through Walmart and say, thank you, Jesus, just for someone to hear. I don't know. Sometimes it's the simplest things that he asks us to do that we have the hardest problem in doing. Amen. Amen. It's just like writing a Jesus loves you on a piece of paper, taking it to Walmart and handing it to somebody and just walk off. Very simple, ain't it? But it's very hard to do. Well, they might throw it and hit me or something. Well, it's just a piece of paper. I don't think it'll kill you. Amen? But think about it. The simplest things we have a hard time with. But I want to try to do better tomorrow than what I did today. Amen? If y'all stand, we have an altar call. But myself, I want to forgive like Jesus does. I'm going to get myself to where I have enough love. And that's what it takes. Without love, you ain't going to forgive them. Because without love, if you ain't got love, you got anger. But anger, love takes over all that. When you accept him into your life, love comes bubbling in. And that's what causes you to be able to forgive like that. That's why I like that song, Help Me to Be Less Like Me and a Lot Like Jesus. Amen. I think about that a lot because I don't want to be like me no more. I want to be all about Him. Amen. 